Hello friends, welcome to ePartshala. The model that we are dealing with is uh, the concept of nation and we are dealing with three thinkers here, Mohammad Iqbal, uh, Veer Savarkar and Rabindranath Tagore. Now this module is uh, dealing with a very fascinating concept in the subject of political science and that's uh, the idea of uh, nation. It's a very fluid idea, so much so that it is considered to be as uh, the other side of the coin and the other side of the coin to the, con to the side of uh, nation is a uh, state. Uh, there have been lots of debates about what do we understand with the concept of nation. Now this particular module has picked up very aptly a triology of uh, thinkers who have given a lot of ideas on this very concept of nation. The first thinker is uh, uh, Muhammad Iqbal uh, and the second thinker is Rabindranath Tagore and the third thinker is Veer Savarkar. The objective of this module is particularly uh, and uh, first and foremost is to apprise you of the political ideas of these three thinkers uh, regarding the concept of nation. Also interestingly, it will be uh, a very good module to show the growth of thinker along with his thought. For example, uh, Muhammad Iqbal started as a political thinker and his original stance was of an Indian nationalist. However, he grew into a Muslim nationalist consequently. So, um, meanwhile, while you, are, while you are studying the growth of a thinker, you would also be noticing the factors leading to this. And name of the module is Idea of Nation, Iqbal, Tagore and Savarkar. The idea of nation propounded by Iqbal, Tagore and Savarkar is considered as significant contribution to the understanding of Indian political thought. Their understanding of nations varied as their experiences, arguments and goals are different. Iqbal, a passionate poet, fancied about Indian nationalistic spirit. Subsequently, he turned out to be a staunch supporter of pan-Islamism and separate Muslim statehood as soon as he realized the plight of the Muslims in India and other parts of the world. Tagore, a versatile literary genius, looked into the nature of source of unifying factor apart from the objective elements behind the national solidarity. Savarkar provided the idea of nation by redefining the Hindu identity. He considered the idea of Hindutva or Hinduness would be the fundamental principle of nation building in India. Muhammad Iqbal, a passionate poet, cherished a deep attachment with the sights and sounds, flora and fauna, valleys and rivers, pilgrimages and temples of India. His early poetic renderings reflected unflinching support to the Indian nation and nationalism. However, his journey to Europe incited in him strong affinity and deep love for the religion that is Islam. Iqbal's formulation of nation was evolved through three different phases which were nationalistic phase, pan-Islamism and critique of western nationalism and demand of separate Muslim statehood. Nationalistic phase. Iqbal earned fame in the early year as a true nationalistic patriot, poet who showed a strong commitment to the Indian nationalism through a number of renderings. He unraveled his deep anguish in the poem tasveer e dard the picture of sorrow, regarding the persistent discord and growing animosity among different religious communities in India. The same poem, written by Iqbal, upheld the principle of human love as the highest value and ultimate binding force which could bring together all human beings overcoming all prejudices. Further, in sada e dard the cry of pain, he lamented over the disunity and in irreconcilable gap among the different communities in India. Even Iqbal was so mesmerized with the spirit of Indian nationalism that being a poet, enamored in different epithets, he expressed his affection and attachment to the Indian people of his society and spoke greatly about their glorious culture, heritage, its rivers, countryside and mountains etc. In the poem Naya Shivala, The New Temple, he envisioned for constructing a temple in India wherein an idol of Mother India would be installed and worshipped. Iqbal's passionate adoration for the motherland was revealed in the famous words Sare jahan se achha, Hindu sata hamara, mazhab nahi sikhata, aapas mein bair rakhna, Hindi hai hum, vatan hai, Hindu sata hamara. Meaning, my India is the best country in the world. Religion does not teach antagonism among each other. We all are Indian and India is our country. He was so immensely moved by the idea of nationalism that his feeling of belongingness to India reverberated in number of his poems. 
His phase as a critic of uh, Western nationalism and pan-Islamism is his next phase. Iqbal criticizes the Western concept of nationalism from his understanding of Western intellectual traditions and assessment of Europe, expansionism. Iqbal reached to the conclusion that under the spell of Western nationalism, the Egyptians, the Iranians, the Turks and the Arabs, keeping aside their religious bond, gradually became inclined to their racial origin and thereby promptly became prey to the Western aggression and exploitation. But the idea of nation was more than a simple geographical delimitation of land, rather a political concept. It was based on the principle of cohesiveness among individuals. However, Iqbal conceived that a nation based on law of human association did not necessarily contradict Islamic values. It appeared to Iqbal from the contemplation of Quran that Islam prompted love and harmony among making instead of sparring in fundamentalist and racial orientation. Iqbal further asserted that Europe became disintegrated as soon as the religious unity disappeared. The continent experienced a prolonged chaos and series of protests since the Christianity failed to emerge as a binding force. Even the idea of nationalism failed to rescue them from the imminent consequences. Iqbal did not want Asia should meet with a similar fate. Iqbal asserted that it would disintegrate Islam if the Indian Muslim conceded to the spirit of Indian nationalism. On the contrary, he advocated for maintaining communal brotherhood and cultural autonomy as well as political autonomy of the Muslim. His call for separate Muslim nationhood is next phase of evolution as a political thinker. Iqbal more and more started realizing need for formation of a separate state for the Muslim population in India. He mentioned in a message sent to the Central Khilafat Committee in 1922 that the duty of Muslims was to arrange distinct governments for themselves. Around 1928-29, Iqbal asserted that the Muslim nations must concentrate on their own interests and remain focused to this end till they became strong enough to emerge as family of republics. And he urged that the boundary would be drawn on the basis of Islamic values and not political nationalism. Indeed, Iqbal conceptualized a distinct Muslim nationalism, a synthesis between nationalism and pan-Islamism in compliance with the Islamic values and principles. He visualized that in several non-Muslim countries, Muslim people's allegiance to the predominant spirit of composite nationalism has been proved counterproductive to the interest. It was evident to him that in India, the similar experiment of showing loyalty to the plural society rather than uh, to the Muslim community would be detrimental to the autonomy of Muslim population. In 1909, Iqbal demanded a separate arrangement for Hindus and Muslims. Iqbal steadfastly discorded with the Congress and Muslim League's vision of rehabilitating the and accommodating Muslims in the Indian polity. Iqbal enumerated in the eight letters to Jinnah the pressing need of separate statehood for the Muslims. In 1927, as an elected member of Punjab Legislative Assembly, Iqbal expounded the impracticability of the notion of united nationalism. In an address to the Muslim League session in 1928, he demanded for the need of creating a state within the territorial boundary of India for the Muslims. In the presidential ad address at the Muslim League session in 1930, the fullest manifestation of his claim of creating a Muslim state came out. Time and again, Iqbal asserted his firm adherence to the demand of a separate homeland to the Muslim, to the Nehru Committee, as well as Simon Commission. During the roundtable conferences also, he further insisted on the exigency of creating a predominantly Muslim state. He believed that the foundation of politics must be religion. Otherwise, it would be an aversion of deen, that is Islamic faith, and it would turn into Machiavellian order of state. Coming on to the political views of Rabindranath Tagore vis-a-vis -vis nationalism, Rabindranath Tagore, a Nobel laureate, poet and patriot, expressed through his literary works and his feelings for India. Tagore's understanding of nation and nationalism developed under the backdrop of series of socio-political, economic, cultural developments that were taking place in India at, during his time. His profound nationalistic spirit still reverberates in the national anthems of the three different countries, that is India, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. 
However, after 1917, his high appreciation for the notion of nationalism turned into severe criticism. He unconditionally denounced the modern notion of nationalism championed by the West. The statist version of nationalism and its attribute of aggressiveness, claim of superiority, madness for subjugating and annihilating other nations detested him. On the contrary, he strongly emphasized on a version of another kind of nationalism which was embedded in society, not in state, which would preserve the humanity according to him. Rabindranath Tagore in an article entitled, What is Nation? illustrated and interrogated the idea of nation from various perspectives. Tagore was not convinced with any particular term in Bengali for representing nation or nationalism as he did not find any suitable alternative which might bear the exact sense of the term. Therefore, he preferred to use the English term nationalism and nation in analyzing his views. Another prerequisite of nation building according to Tagore was to agree upon the doctrine which had basis in racial heterogeneity rather than homogeneity. Tagore contradicted the idea of racial homogeneity as it was also true that in this world there was not a single race which was pure. Finally, wealth and territoriality might be considered as, as important components of nation building, but this could not properly clarify the essence of a nation. Tagore also believed that nation was not a mere compound of race, religion, language, dynastic rule and geographical landscape. Rather, it was an alive entity, a conscious being, an ideation form of an extended family of mankind. Indeed, nationhood was the feeling of attachment of an individual with a particular group of people having common memories of past and experiences of the present. Nation is such an entity which is having a soul. It is the willingness of a group of people to stay together. The nation is a living reality. Nationality is a psychological commodity. In the article, What is Nation?, Tagore also stressed on autonomy and distinctiveness of nations. In the nationalism, he criticized that the autonomy of the nation could prove to be pernicious. He argued that the urge to establish distinctiveness of a nation ultimately resulted in flaunting its superiority over other nations. Even it might provoke a nation to devour other nations. Tagore accused the Western nationalism for the catastrophic consequence of the First World War and imperialist expansion throughout the globe. Even he warned the Japanese people to abandon the organized self-seeking mechanism of the Western nationalism. In his writing Creative Unity, Tagore delineated the persistent conflict of the modern day world and which was between uh, the living spirit of the people and the process of nation building. Tagore came up with the idea of the cult of the nation, which was based on human professionalism. He maintained that the cult would lead people towards a great success, but he warned strongly that it would bring greater danger for the individuals by turning them away from the higher purpose of life. Sometimes, according to Tagore, self-interests of the people represent interests of all. Therefore, a nation promoting collective interests and remaining within its own limits would not appear to be a sinister to the other nations. But Tagore lamented that in reality, almost every nation practiced unrestrained selfishness and involved in aggression occupying land of foreign countries. He also elaborated that nationalism as it evolved in an unrestricted manner would debase the moral foundation of of human civilization. European nationalism tended to occupy the world market according to Tagore and to conquer and exploit. In the wake of industrialization and advancement of science and technology, nationalism became slave to capitalism. Capitalism, for its ever-increasing crave for expansion, had taken over the West. The materialistic crave dehumanized the notion of nationalism according to Tagore. Hence, he was highly critical of European sense of nationalism. Tagore mentioned that India did not witness the emergence of nation as it was developed in the West. For centuries, there were numerous intermixings of races in India as a result of foreign invasion. Subsequently, the invaders made this land as their habitation for generations. Therefore, different cultures, languages, religions coexist in India and Indian society absorbed almost all the elements and practices of all the races coming from outside. He was quite confirmed of the fact that the pursuit of installing or imitating western version of nation in India would be counterproductive. 
universal humanism, emancipation, sentiment of bounding and reciprocity and moral consideration were the fundamental principles of Tagore's idea of nationalism. The third of the trio of thinkers that we are studying right now in this module is V.D. Savarkar. Savarkar was one of the prominent trailblazers of Hindutva and Hindu Rashtra in India. His fondness with the Hindu identity grew in his childhood, which was evident from his first publication entitled The Glory of Hindu Culture. His early political career was started as a revolutionary nationalist, which was ended with his imprisonment for being convicted in a case of attempting murder of Curzon Willie and A.M.I. Curzon in 1910. He uh, submerged in the Hindu nationalist politics as soon as he was released from the jail. He founded Ratnagiri Hindu Sabha in 1924, which was later merged into Hindu Mahasabha. He wrote The History of War of Indian Independence in 1909 and declared Sepoy Mutiny as the first war of independence, shunning the clandestine efforts of the British Empire to distort and demoralize Indian nationalistic spirit. Another famous writing of him was a pamphlet entitled Hindutva, Who is a Hindu in 1923, which illustrated his conceptualization of Hindu, Hindutva and Hindu Rashtra. Savarkar formulated the idea of nation on the basis of kinship, communal identity and religious affinity. His perception of nation was an amalgamation of territoriality and cultural nationalism. The central argument of his version of nation was based on the identity of Hindu and Hindutva. At the outset, he rendered a territorial definition to Hindu. As he mentions, that the residents of the Sindhu landscape had been named as Hindu. He sought to trace the origin of the nomenclature Hindu. In his perception, the nomenclature Hindu was originated from the name of the place of habitation of that population. He believed that a sense of nationality gradually developed among the people residing on the Sindhu river belts and they emerged as a nation of Hindus. And yet, after their expansion to the furthest corners of India, they retained their nationhood. The Hindus are not merely the citizens of India because they are united not only by bonds of the love they bear to a common motherland but also by the bonds of a common blood. They are not only a nation, he says, but also a race which is named as Jati in Hindi. The word Jati means brotherhood, a race determined by common origin. All Hindus claim to have in their veins the blood of the mighty race incorporated with the descendants from the Vedic fathers, the Sindhus. Hindus are bound together not only by the tie of the love we can uh, bear to a common fatherland and by the common blood, but also by the ties of the common homage we pay to our great civilization, our Hindu culture, which would not be better rendered than by the word Sanskriti. Savarkar also mentioned that Hindu must consider this land as his Pitribhu, that is fatherland, as well as Punyabhu, that is holy land. Savarkar introduced a far more comprehensive term Hindutva in order to define the identity and nature of the common born among all Hindus. Hindutva is not identical with what is vaguely indicated by the term Hinduism. But when we attempt to investigate into the essential significance of Hindutva, we do not primarily and certainly not mainly concern ourselves with any particular theoretic or religious dogma or creed. Hindutva embraces all the departments of activity of the whole being of our Hindu race. Hinduism is uh, only a derivative, a fraction, a part of Hindutva. There were divergent schools and sects under the broader spectrum of Hindu dharma. Indeed, Savarkar stipulated that uh, there were different paths and uh, philosophical schools under the ages of Hindu dharma. The Sikhs, Jains, Lingayats, Samajis and others were different branches of Hindu dharma. Therefore, according to Savarkar, the other sects and religious communities which were native to Hindu Pan were nothing but variants of a common origin. However, preponderance of Hinduism excluded or belittled other Hindu religious communities which were numerically inferior to the Hinduism religion. Nevertheless, Savarkar thought that Hindus belonging to different schools had been acclimatized to Hindu culture and they considered this land as their Pitribhu as well as Punyabhu. Savarkar asserted that Christianity and Islam were not native to this land of Hindustan because they recognized the faraway land of their origin in Arabia or Palestine as the sacred place or holy land. 
does neither the persons belonging to these religions nor the hindu converts indoctrinated to those religions could ever be regarded as hindu an important objective of savarkar's formulation of the idea of hindu identity was to preclude other minority hindu community to be aligned with the muslim he was afraid of the communal overtone of the claims of the muslims to secure their representation the growing strength of muslim league also made him anxious of their future intentions Therefore he appealed to the Hindu minority community that they could claim their demands and representation and other essential and specific demands on the basis of their numerical strength and status but he also clarified that they must avoid carefully while doing so separatist orientations or an approach of damaging interests of the Hindu majority community as the hindus numerically outnumbered the other communities therefore they should be considered national community and they should be vanguard of nationalism which would be branded as hindu nationalism in this land however savarkar stated that the other minority communities would be granted fair share in all avenues of their lives they should be ensured representation proportionate to their population and merit he sought to minimize all sorts of interventions and claim of shares of the non hindu people even savarkar declined to grant any sort of privileges and preferential treatments to the non hindu community so friends um to conclude module in which we uh, studied the ideas of uh, muhammad iqbal veer savarkar and rabindranath tagore it's uh, very interesting to conclude that these three thinkers are actually presenting the three um points of the spectrum of understanding of nationalism muhammad iqbal is talking about a uh, he 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 starts talking about pan islamization and settles on uh, an islamic state which was then uh, converted into a two nations theory and uh, we all know the consequence was carving out of a new country out of india after partition and that is the east pakistan and the west pakistan we'll come to that a little later the second thinker is rabindranath tagore now he particularly is very interesting because he in his times is talking about internationalism or internationalistic approach to um, nationalism he was uh, he was criticized for such ideas also however we understand the relevance of rabindranath tagore because now we are living in a world which is highly globalized thirdly uh, veer savarkar uh, is presenting the other side of the spectrum um, because he is speaking about a country based on religion however the focus of religion here in case of sabarkar is not islam but hindutva